Jesus. We've come together to thank you for your goodness. We're so grateful for who you are to us. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. Good morning, good morning, good morning. In all my days, good morning. I've been held in your hand. Maurice, Heather. Honey, be love, call to conquer. Angie, Nancy, good morning. Christine, good morning. Melissa, good morning. Tammy, good morning. Jeanette, good morning. Robin, Sandy, good morning. Gwen, good morning. <laughs> Charity, Ruth, Kristen, Ambassador, what up, fam? Jeff, Terrence, Cunningham, Les, Julia, Zach, Ordinary Jen, Ruthie, Marie, Christian, Pamela, Rachel, Bernice, good morning, Katie, Van, Patricia, Stockton in the house, Sonia, Good morning, mother-in-law. Mom, say good morning, Larissa. Sarah. Brave. Brittany. Denise. Prince. Larissa. What's happening? Nikita. Congratulations on that baby, Nikita. Jamie. Maurice. Ramona. Lakeisha, Kathy, Larry, Abby, good morning, Elastigirl, Travis, what up fam, Jennifer, Chandra, Chandra, I just messed that up. Jamie Joy, good morning. Good morning, Mom. Hey, babe, is this the... Oh, this is regular creamer, huh? Good morning, Mary. Ruby, Sheila. Come on. Francine. I'm hoping that the next 100 days will be better, too. I think God's going to meet us there. Miss Lathra, good morning, Cindy. Clark, Janice, Randa, what? She up this morning. Shan, good morning. Sean Derrick, did I get it right? Sean Derrick Ashmore. Courtney Babb, holla. Gwen, Gwendolyn. Tanya. Good morning. Tanya, good morning. So grateful for your dinner. Roz, hey Roz. Chastity, good morning. Natalie. Katrina, going to the war room. Be back. <laughs> Elaine, what up? Nicole, Jesus and coffee. Come on, that's how we're starting it. Close, close. All right. I'll leave it alone, Doc. I'll leave it alone. I won't try to say it no more. Josephine. Good morning, y'all. Divine, what up, fam? So good to see you all here, bro. Yo, Raven's song that she did on Instagram, Revive Us Again. Oh, my goodness. Bro, tell her it was fire, yo. Amazing. I went in this morning. Latrice, Venus, what up, Jane? 
Can you give a hand up? Oh, God. <laughs> Jane, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about that. Come on, let's go red, y'all. Let's invite God into this space. Lori, Lindsay, come on. Renee, Gladys, Jane. Good morning. Let's invite the presence of God into this place. Come on, let's go red. Let's put out the red carpet. Lord, we invite you in. Would you come into this space? Would you come into this space? Would you meet us in this room? Lord, we need you. We need a word from you. We need your presence. We need your power. We need you in this place. So, Father, would you meet us? Come on, Jesus, and see about me. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for everyone that's gathering. We thank you for everyone that's jumping on. We thank you for people that are watching this days after this moment. We pray that your spirit would speak, would pierce the hearts, would capture uh, minds, Father, would captivate us, captivate our imagination, Father. Would you move by your spirit? Lead us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Yo, good morning, y'all. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yo, this is the uh, Good News Today devotional where, hey, according to yesterday, anything could happen. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. Y'all, yesterday, yesterday. I don't know where that came from. I don't know what we found. We analyzed the coffee. There were no foreign elements in the coffee, so I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, but I tell you what. Uh... I felt the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost up in here. Um, and uh, I got some great comments, some great um, in inboxes of people that um, that said, yo, you, you were speaking directly to me. Um, so sometimes it's just for a couple of folks to say, the Lord has made. Yo, what was y'all? Well, give me some feedback. Hey, Seta. Hey, Peaches, give me some feedback from yesterday, y'all. I, I I jumped out there. I was using stuff. It's good. <laughs> That's good, Amy. Amy said she listened to it twice. Sometimes I'll go back and kind of listen to some segments. I ain't ready yet to listen to that from yesterday. I am not ready. Um, I am not ready. It was good. I listened to it twice. Hello. Good morning. All the way from Savannah, Georgia. Hey, loved it. Um, let's see. Amen. God was in it. <laughs> Nancy said it was bold. And I said, I don't know what happened. Jamie, Jamie says God happened. Amen to that. Amen. Jesus happened. Yesterday really exposed my perfectionism in a new way. Oh, that's good. She said it exposed her perfectionism in a new way. That's really good. Uh, yesterday was like a deep tissue massage, Aaron says. That's good. Checking uh, from, from Kentucky. Truth. Miss, I, I missed yesterday. Uh, yo, Nancy, you should go back and watch it or or not watch it. It all depends on how you want to do, how you want to be. Uh, but it was worth going back to watch, though. Let's see. Bold. Yesterday was fire. I was not ready. Uh, that's God time and not mine. Uh, good morning from Louisville, Kentucky. Okay, got to go back and listen to yesterday, I guess. Oh, Susie, yo. It was off the chain and R-rated. I'll put it that. It was off the chain and R-rated. We, we went in. I put it this way. Anytime a preacher uses the word masturbation in a morning devotional several times, you know it was a different kind of devotion. <laughs> all right. So we'll get started today. Uh, it could apply to all proclivities. Exactly. Exactly. It was, it was to all proclivities. It was all of them. But it was a grown folks, real, let's get real talk. Um... It was, oh yeah, it was off the chain uh, in a really good way. So go back and watch yesterday. It's on YouTube. Uh, but for those of you that are tuning in today, or if you're new around here, it's a good news today, morning devotional. We got our great theme song. We're going to rock it for you. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Shrug your shoulders just a little bit. Uh, shrug your shoulders just a little bit. Uh, just groove just a little bit. 
Uh, 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 come on. Uh, let's go. Hey. Everything's going to be okay. Come on. Yo, would you tell somebody, would you put it in there? Everything's going to be okay. 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 <laughs> Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Be encouraged. I hope you're encouraged today. Everything's going to be okay. I want to jump in. I want to jump in. Um to where we left off in the story of Jacob, but I just feel like I gotta drop this out here as we're at the family table. I gotta, uh, I gotta just gotta drop. I'm not going to expound on it today. I I'll come back to it because I really wanted to get back into this. But can we just, can we just call out just a little bit of racism? I, I don't want to have a moment today and go there, but but I just feel like the 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 time for saying I didn't know. It was definitely for mature Christians, spiritual mature. Yes. Um, the time for saying, I didn't realize or I didn't know, concerning our rhetoric around the coronavirus and our Asian brothers and sisters is over. Can we announce that and declare that it's done? The time for acting like you didn't know that the language is offensive and racist and in it's to, to, to use that language at this stage of the game is just downright disrespectful. It shows a deep disregard for our brothers and sisters that are Asian and you just can't say you didn't know any better. At this point, you know that it's offensive, you know that it's wrong, and you do it for spite. And here's the deal, it's not funny. It's not funny, and I, and I joke, I laugh at stuff that's completely inappropriate all the time. That's my wife, it drives her crazy. She'd be like, how can you be saved? How can you be saved and you think that's funny? I laugh at stuff all the time. Yo, this is not funny. Do you know, like, just research a little bit. Do you know that violent acts against Asians are at an all-time high since the month of March, since, th since this stuff got public, February, March? So what is, the f which is, which is the funny statement that gets laughed, how that reverberates around the country is it signals racists to now go and act out those words. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying not to linger here, but it just it just makes me emotional to see the amount of hate, and how we play around with it, and how we think it's innocent, how we think it's of no effect, and we laugh, and we 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 you you say stuff in comments that you would never say to anybody's face, because if you ever said something like that to my face, Lord, have mercy, Jesus, it's disrespectful. It's racist, it's wrong, and you gotta stop. And if you got family members or friends that are laughing at this stuff or commenting on this stuff or saying this stuff, yo, shut it down. In the name of Jesus, shut it down. Like, shut it down. This is why it lives. This is why racism lives. This is why it does it. So, and, and you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, you, you don't see me on record anywhere touching the president. And for better or for worse, Judge me, don't judge me. I pick my battles. I don't, I don't go there. But him using those words, blatant disregard, disrespect. And at this stage of the game, he cannot claim ignorance. His press secretary can't claim comedy. It's racist, it's sinful, it's wrong. And if you're a Christian, and still stand in full 100% support 
of these ideologies that are being perpetuated, then you are complicit. And I know I'm, I, I'm, I'm, putting, I'm putting it out there and I, and, I, and I know it's the third rail. People don't do it. People walk away from churches. People get up from the table. But here's the deal. I rather, I'm not going to risk perpetual racist acts against my Asian siblings because our leadership is being reckless with his rhetoric. It results in violence and perpetuates racism in all of our, if, it, if let me tell you something, if Obama did it, I'd call him out too. You can check my record. I ain't a Democrat, I ain't a Republican, I'm, a, I'm independent. I voted for both Republican and Democrat. So I'm not, I'm not partisan in this moment. I'm Christian in this moment. You, you know what I'm saying? I can, I can compliment Trump. What, the steps that he made for, for incarceration and stuff like that, I think that's great. I think what him and uh, Van, what's his name? The, the black guy, what does it say? Yeah, Van Jones. Van Jones, the work that they did together. I think that's great. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not there. And, I, and the reason why, because I don't want to go there and get into it. But yo, wrong is 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 wrong, is wrong and it's wrong. Stop it, stop it, stop it, and demand it. Demand it. Demand it. Van Jones, thank you, that's it. Demand it. Stop laughing at it, stop perpetuating it, and wherever you see it, wherever you hear it, shut it down. Our Asian siblings are suffering under the rhetoric that some of us, that some of you consider funny, some of you consider uh, lighthearted, or come on, it doesn't, to say that, I'm not even gonna repeat any of the stuff that he said, but to say it is downright wrong, and it has a direct impact on our siblings. And we can't scream and shout and protest Black Lives Matter and then allow this oppression to land on our Asian brothers and sisters and we sit silent. It's not right. We can't do that. So I just wanted to take, take today and just go there because it results in something. Look at the stats. There's a direct correlation between this uptick in rhetoric and the uptick in violent acts. And I've got too many siblings that are Asian to risk. If something happened to them, it would break and devastate my heart. And I'd be mad as if it was my own children. So stop it. And Christians hold our leadership accountable. It's not okay, Mr. President. It's not okay. <sighs> All right. Let me take a deep breath. It, it really upsets me. It really upsets me. Okay. Um, I, I think I'm, we're working on some, we, we're working on, um, we're working on getting journals ready to be shipped next week for the next 100 days. Um, it's a journal, um, that will be your 100 day journal. Uh, we're working hard on the team. We're trying to get it in and ready so y'all can order them in the next day or two and they get to you next week so we can start journeying together. The next 100 days, yo, we gonna lock in and we gonna walk together and we gonna go after God like never before. And we gonna document our journey. We're going to document our journey. So I'm working. We're going to get it in. As soon as it opens, I'm going to get y'all to start pre-ordering. And I'm going to have my team ready. We're going to be up shipping them, getting them going. Mike McLemore, what's up? Good morning, fam. So we're going to get them shipping because I want us to journey and I want us to document the next 100 days. And some of you have multiple journals and stuff that you write in. My wife got a bunch of journals that she just got. Gratitude journal, uh, devotional journal, sermon journal. So I want you to have your 100-day journal. 100 days. 100 days. We probably You probably ain't going to be able to get it by July 1, but the goal is for you to get it within that week of the first 100 days. So we're working hard to get them to you as soon as possible. It's like the Lord gave me this vision and I'm just reacting to it. I'm just responding to it. I'm just going to go with what he's doing. I want us to look because of what I want you to do, the year 2020, 
I, I need you to I need you to capture the narrative of what the Lord is doing. And it will not be said 10 years from now uh, when everyone's talking about the coronavirus of 2020, talking about the racism of 2020. You're going to have a document. I'm trying to give you 100 days of receipts. Come on in here, somebody. 100 days of receipts of God's faithfulness and God's goodness. Randy, you praying for the team. You are the team. They've been delivered to your house. You the one doing the packing. Um. I, I, I want you to have receipts of God's faithfulness and God's presence during this time, during this time. It's not a, it's not a hundred days of lies, of denial. It, this is really great out here. No, it's, it's harder than it's ever been, but God is gooder than he's ever been. It ain't good English, but it's great theology. Okay, so our team is working on that. We're going to get those. Uh... Um, um, we're going to get those out and, and that's coming. As we look to the hundred days, yesterday I had us looking back. I had us looking back. Um, as y'all look back and as you reflect on your flesh, anybody find anything? Did you find anything? T-shirts are coming. T-shirts are coming. T-shirts are coming. As you look back, did anybody find anything? You ain't got to tell me what you found. Just, just say, I found something. Just say, as I'm reflecting, I'm finding. As I'm reflecting, I'm finding. Just let me know. Just let me know if you found anything. Thank you, Miss B. If you found anything, as you reflect, I want you to take some time, especially this week, just to reflect. Um, uh, reflect. Yes, it'll be it'll be available to people that live abroad. If you live abroad, we'll send it to you abroad. As long as you got an address and we can put a stamp on it and get it to you, we'll send it to you. Reflect. I got you reflecting on your flesh. That's what yesterday was about. It was about reflecting on your flesh and looking back. Y'all found some, found it, and gave it away. I love it. Because watch this. Here's the word from yesterday. Here's the here's the word from yesterday. The fuel for my forward. The fuel for our forward may be found in the healing of our past. So Jacob is at this moment in chapter 32 where he's about to face his past so that he might find fuel to move forward. And he has no idea God is about to propel him forward, but his forward is the, the, the fuel for his forward is found in the healing of his past. He's able to break forth and go forward because of the healing that he was getting ready to do with Esau. There comes a moment when you got to recognize where you messed up. But it's interesting, though. So here's the thing. Esau is scared out. Jacob is scared out of his mind because he's about to see Esau and he knows Esau has every reason to kill him and his whole family. He, he know he has every reason. So Esau, you, you know, he's, I mean, Jacob, you know, he's scared because even as he sets up his family for the meeting, he puts his family and his servants and his cattle and all that. He splits them up. He puts them in one place and then he has another group set where he sets him in another place. And then he goes another place. The idea here is that uh, if Esau is killing one half of his family, the other half can get away while he's killing the one half. Excuse me. He's that afraid. Is that, is that hot? Is that serious? So then he sets them and then he goes and sits alone. And it is in this moment alone when God comes in the form of, an, of a wrestler, of an angel, a man. This, this man comes to him and yo, they start wrestling. They start wrestling. Here, here's where Jacob is still in his strength because he... He's, he's putting up a fight. He recognizes that this is God. This is something greater than him. And he even in this moment fights God. If you don't walk in the spirit, if you don't snatch your righteous mind, you will be so confident in your ability. You will be wrestling against the will of God, thinking you're doing the right thing. There's some places where the job isn't what he wanted you to have, but you still wrestling to try to have it. There's some relationships that God didn't want you to be in, but you still wrestling to stay in them. 
there's still some people that you're wrestling and trying to fight to have in your life, but, but he didn't want you to have them. There are some storms that need to just roll through, that it just need to wash through your life. And you are fighting against the storm, boarding up the walls. No, no, no. He sent the storm to cleanse and to purify and you trying to protect. Could it be that you're wrestling the wrong thing? You're fighting against the wrong thing. Here we are in a pandemic. All this stuff is coming and some of you are still trying to fight to survive. Maybe the goal ain't for you to survive in this season. Maybe the goal is for you to surrender in this season. And maybe there's some things in you that he don't want to survive through this season. There's some things in you that he wants to die in this season. But Jacob in his strength and his ability to fight, he just kept on fighting. Some of you, your worst, I'm telling you. For some of us, our, our worst thing is our failure and our insecurity. For some of you, your worst threat, the, the, the biggest enemy, your biggest opposition is how strong you are. Some of you, you pride yourself on your strength. You pride yourself on your ability to kill the game. You pride yourself, and people say this about you. People say, oh, man, you give them anything, they'll do it. They got, they're so strong. People say, you're so strong. You're so strong. And was that a behavior that was affirmed in you early? Is that the role you had to play in your family? Oh, you're so strong. You hold everything together. One of Jacob's problems is his mama affirmed something in him early that he lived out over time. Hello, and here, somebody. Some of you, your biggest problem is that you got stuff confirmed in you early and you got typecast to play a role and you still playing that role. And God is saying in this season, I don't want that role to survive. Because that role is going to diminish your ability to play a greater role that I want you to play. You know, actors, the worst, her, hate, thing they hate worse is to be typecast because that means they only gonna be able to play that role for the rest of their life. And God is saying, I, am not, I have not typecast you in my kingdom. You will not just be one role for the rest of your life. I want you to do more, but in order for you to do more, you gotta be willing to kill this role. You gotta be willing to say no to this character. And now you're wrestling to try to keep it. Jacob is wrestling with the angel of God. He's wrestling with God and he's putting up a heck of a fight. Some of you, you're wrestling with God and you're putting up a heck of a fight. You're still fighting for your own independence. You're still fighting to prove that you're not something that somebody said you were, or you're trying to fight to live up to something that somebody said you are, and you just need to surrender it all. What are you living up to? Even, some, even, even you're trying to live up to a goal you even set for yourself. You set yourself based off of, you set the goal based off of what? Off of the spirit of God or off of your flesh? But what's the difference? The difference is one will be fueled by God. The other one will be wrestled against by God. And let me tell you, when, when wrestling with God, he don't play fair. And yeah, you ain't gonna like this. He don't play fair. He don't play fair. Because, because some of you are so strong, you will fight, you will fight, and you'll mess around and win. So he's not even gonna play fair. Watch, watch, watch what he does. In, 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 in Genesis chapter 32, listen to this. So verse 24, so Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. They wrestled till daybreak. Watch this. Watch this. This is some of you. You so strong. You so good. Listen to this. Listen to this. Wrestled to daybreak, verse 25, when the man saw that he could not overpower him, the angel that he sent, he says, when I saw that I couldn't overpower him, Watch this. This is a word. Watch this. Watch this. His will is so strong. I can't overpower his will. He wanted so bad. He wanted Jacob want to win so bad. I cannot overpower his will. Some of you, your will is so strong. Your flesh is so strong. God says, I can't overpower your will. 
It's in the text. I know some of you that's much with your theological mind because you're saying God can do anything. But I'm just saying God ain't going to play fair with you. He was so self-sufficient. I love that. I love that, Jane. She says he was so self-sufficient, but he wasn't God-sufficient. And some of you are so self-sufficient and so, so not God-sufficient that your will is so strong, God's will can't overpower you. Can't overpower. If you really think about that, you've been there and you've done it. You wanted it so bad, your will was so strong to have it, and you knew it was wrong, and the Holy Spirit was right there, but the Holy Spirit couldn't overpower you. You did it anyway. Come on. You've been there. You've been there. Some of you, your will was so strong, you did it anyway. You went there anyway. You slept with him anyway. You smoked it anyway. You spent it anyway. You gave it away anyway. You lied anyway. You hated anyway. Come on in here. He couldn't overpower you. It sounded like a theological stretch first, didn't it? But now you realize I didn't I didn't done it so many times. I've let my will overpower him so many times. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch what happens though. He loved him so much. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, watch this, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. There comes a point where the Holy Spirit will say, all right, I'm tired of wrestling with you. Let me take the strongest part of you and disable it. Ah, oh, you should have slept in today. You should have slept in today. He won't play fair with you. He loves you so much. At some point, he'll say, okay, I'm tired of wrestling over this. Let me knock his hip socket out because his strength is he walks his own way. He stands in his own power and he does it his own thing. So let me it, let me disable this hip so he ain't he ain't got he ain't able to fight. So let me knock his socket out. If you think about it, it's like, wow. It's painful, but it's also the epitome of love. I love you too much to have you standing in your own foolishness, your own selfishness, your own self-righteousness. So let me knock you out of socket. You know how they say you out of pocket? He says, let me knock you out of socket. Let me knock you out of socket. Let me disrupt your world. Let me disrupt your world. Let me, just, let, me, let me just disrupt your world. Storm that was at bay, storm, come on in and disrupt this self-confidence. Disrupt this self-preservation. So the grace of God will shift and allow a storm in to remind you that your power ain't in your hip bone. Your power is in the, is in the hand of God. Come on and hear somebody. Come on and hear somebody. So God will disrupt your pride. He will disrupt your confidence. He will knock you out of socket. Maybe, maybe that's the kind of love you need right now. And maybe that's the kind of love you're receiving right now. And maybe that's the kind of love you're fighting right now. Maybe he's loving you enough. Not by giving you more, but by giving you less so that you might depend on him more. There are seasons when that's what love looks like. The seasons when that's what love looks like. And this is where you need to take out your pen and take notes on Jacob because this is when we see Jacob at his best. Watch this. Jacob, for the first time in his life, has lost. His strength has been matched by the strength of God and he has lost. Watch this, watch this, watch this. He loses. There's no way he can win 
Winning now from his perspective is off the table. He cannot overtake him. He has been disconnected, disabled. He has been he's been deconstructed. His hip is out. You can't fight no more. He cannot win. He cannot win. He cannot win. But watch what the text says. He says, Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Verse 26, here it is. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. Jacob had lost, but he was still holding on. Mm -hmm. This is the turn. Here it is. Jacob lost. And watch this. The angel, the God figure says, all right, it's daybreak. You've lost. Let me go. Let me go. It's over. Let me go. It's done. You've lost. Here's the worst thing you could do is when you lose, when you realize your will won't be your way, when you realize it ain't going to look like what you thought it was going to look like, the worst thing you could do at that moment is let him go. You got an opportunity to give up. Jacob had an opportunity to quit and call it a day and says, well, I lost this one. No, but Jacob in his righteous mind thought to himself, I've gone through too much and I've caused too much damage for me to lose myself and still lose God. No, you still God and you still here. I ain't about to let you go. He says to the angel, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Here's the warning. Here's the thing. The angel, God said, let me go now. He, knowing that I do have a blessing for you, but if you ain't got sense enough to hold on and ask for it, if you want to walk away now, you can walk away now and miss the blessing. So he says, you can't give up now and quit. You lost. But he was scared checking the motive and say, were you after me for what I could get for you? Or were you after me for me? Now that you know you ain't going to get what you wanted, are you going to walk away and quit now? Or are you going to hold on for what I have for you? Ah, come on and hear somebody. Jacob, after he realized I'm not going to get what I wanted, I'm not go it ain't going to end the way I thought it was going to end. Are you going to get mad and walk away now? Because if you do, it's going to expose your motive. You didn't want God. You wanted what God could give you. You didn't want me. You wanted a redemption. You wanted your past fixed with your brother. You wanted to make everything all right so you could feel better about yourself. You wanted what you wanted. And now that you ain't going to get what you wanted, are you going to walk away from me? Jacob says, no, nah, I come too far. I've been through too much to walk away from this deal with nothing. I'd rather have God than nothing at all. So yes, I ain't going to get what I want, but I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. I'm going to hold on to you until you bless me because you got a blessing in there. You got something for me because you're good. You're God. You got a blessing. So I'm not going to leave here until you bless me. We in Corona, we in 2020, I dare you for a hundred days to hold on to God and say, I know it's 2020 and everybody's written it off, but 2020, I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. I wrestle with you 2020. I fought with you, but I, and I, it is clear that this year ain't going to look like what I thought it was going to look like. It is clear that I have lost. My will has lost. My plans have lost my stuff. It is clear, but I ain't about to let you go until you bless 2020. I ain't letting you go until you bless me because God is in 2020. You are here and God, I could give up now, but I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. Because the goal at this point of the fight is God, period. At this point, I ain't worried about Esau. I ain't worried about other stuff. The goal is God, period. God, you got a blessing for me and it's in 2020. You sent 2020 as a man to wrestle me and to fight me. And we've been wrestling and fighting. And here I go. I'm tapping out. You wrenched my hip. You wrench my hip. I can't. I ain't going to win the way I thought I was going to win. I ain't, it ain't going to be what I thought it was going to be. But I ain't about to let you go either. I ain't about to let you go either until you bless me. Because at this point, 
I didn't come too far and survive too much. I didn't made it through the first hundred days. I ain't about to quit and give up and lower my expectations now. As a matter of fact, my expectations are raised way above my will, but now it's about your will. God, the goal is God, period. And I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. And, and, and hey, I'm going to get greedy with it. Bless me indeed, God. See, because now I got the right motive. Ah, oh, the next hundred days, I need you to know. You, you, the goal is the God period. If you don't do nothing but get this journal and write down every day, the goal is God period. It'll still bless your life because you'll look back five years from now, pull out that journal and see the receipts of my desire was God. My desire was God period. My desire was God. I need you to get some receipts. Bless me. And bless me indeed. In 2020, I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. Oh, you're going to bless me and reconnect. You're going to bless me. And God's going to bless me indeed. That's all he ever wanted. That's all he ever wanted was to bless you. That's all he ever wanted. You, have, you went through all this fighting and all this wrestling and all this conniving and all this manipulating. And all I ever wanted to do was bless you indeed. I'm going to stop there. Because it's just Wednesday and we got two more days in this text. What happens next? <sighs> but I need you to know this is the moment. Um, this is the moment. This is the moment for you to say, all right, I've lost. I've lost what I thought 2020 was going to be. I've lost... Uh, my, my, some of us have lost some money in 2020. We lost some jobs. We lost some expectations. We lost some friends. We've lost some relationships. We've lost some hopes. We've lost some dreams. I've lost. It's okay to say I lost because if the great prophetic voice of Fantasia was here, she'd say, sometimes you got to lose to win. Come on, prophet Fantasia. Sometimes you got to lose to win. I'm telling you, tap out. 2020, I lost, but I'm about to win because I ain't going to let you go till you bless me. Bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. <laughs>